Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do a playthrough of A Feast for Odin, the Norwegian's expansion, uh, a solo mode. Now normally this game is not my cup of tea and to be completely honest it still really isn't, uh, but sometimes it's nice to venture out. I have to say, playing Kingdom Rush got me really into the polyomino and I really wanted some more polyomino games. This game was one of those. <laughs> and then playing Stardew Valley reminded me how much I do enjoy a lot of Euro mechanics. And so this one has that, still has some dice rolling for me. And I can still go hunting, I can go whaling, I can go pillaging. And so I thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to pick this up with the expansion, see what it's like. There are a ton of amazing playthroughs with people that know way more about this game than I do. So if you want to see those, they're Slicker Dips or John Gets Games. I'll put them in the link in the description below. Uh, John Gets Games does a competitive two-player one with the Norwegians and then if you want to see a really good solo Slicker Dips has one but I'm also going to try my hand here I've only played three times I am not great do not watch this for any sort of strategy <laughs> because we're just going to play to have fun. So what we're going to do is we'll do a quick setup and then we'll jump into the playthrough. I will put timestamps so you can jump between the different rounds. It's going to be a total of seven rounds and then I probably won't show my score. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying my score is probably going to be horrendous, but who cares? We're going to have fun. So with the Norwegian expansion, the first thing that's different is actually the board itself. It used to be with the regular game, it was one board with two sides. Now, there are three different sections of the board, and each one has a different player count number on them. I'm, of course, using the one player side on each of these. So it's one to three, one to two, and one to two players. That makes up all of the actions of this game. Yes, there are no actions in this game. You have no choices. <laughs> Just kidding. Over here, I've already set up all of the mountain strips. Uh, this is actually recommended in the original rules. And then I place a pencil here to note these are the only ones that are available to us. And each round, we'll just move the pencil back. And that will denote which mountain strips we have available to us. We also have over here all of our boats that we can potentially purchase. We've got our long boats, our nar boats here, and our whaling boats. Also, now you can actually emigrate with a whaling boat. If you do that, you get one of these little teeny tiny seven victory point tokens. Uh, because if you remember from the original game, uh, when you flip these over and you'd emigrate, they give you a ton of points. I'm hoping I can do that at least a couple of times. I also have all of my uh, different buildings that I can build over here. And then with the expansion, you have what are called artisan boards. And we're going to randomly grab one of these. I'll just grab the top one here. This one's going to be ours. And we can either build this side or this side once per game what we can do is when we would normally buy a shed we can instead buy our artisan shed just off camera we have all of our goods and resources i have them stacked up into three trays the game comes with these by the way these are not from my own setup this is actually from the game itself which is awesome just know that all your goods are going to be double-sided they're going to go from the least valuable being orange to the most valuable being blue or gray uh, and they can level up so the uh, red ones can down downgrade I guess to the orange or they can upgrade to the green and so on and so forth. We also have our money and then we have extra ships here. Down in the corner over here we have our occupation cards. I have shuffled all of them together. You can just have A's, B's, or C's or the combination of them. I have all of them. We also have all of our weapon cards here. And then over here in the corner we have our four exploration boards. We can potentially try and conquer them and use them to gain more points as well as more coins. You can see up here each one has a victory point value. I'm using all of the expansion ones. Uh, they recommend that you have two more than the amount of players, but I think with solo they still recommend having four four so uh if you're playing with two players you would recommend with four if you're playing with three players then you could have maybe five uh, but i have one for each letter so uh there's letters a b c and d i have one for each one because at those specific times they'll flip over and we can actually potentially explore the other side of these if we don't explore these sides of those tiles and we'll see how all that works as we play as an avid Ameritrash game lover, <laughs> who doesn't like to pillage and plunder? Well, this is all the pillaging and plundering that we can do. We can potentially find these either by doing pillaging or plundering, or we can be good and try and use diplomacy and potentially purchase them, except for this crown. You can never purchase the uh, Elizabeth's crown, Elizabeth the Queen, I should say. Uh, we can only plunder that, and you better believe I'm going for that. I need a 16, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Now, when you play the base game, you just have this board. Board, but when you get the expansion, you'll also grab this board, which you need to have 
tool, any of your tool uh, gray goods, you can put over here that have this little tool symbol. And if they're nine, or I should say less than nine for their value, you put them over here because there's now a new worker spot where you can go pay an or and you can actually obtain one of these. We also have the tool items over here that are worth nine or more. And I'm realizing we also have one blue one, uh, the, this necklace that we can put up here as well. And you'll see how those swords work as we play. Next, I have these new victory point tokens. This also came in the expansion. So it used to be if you played an occupation card, you'd have to either play it on the table and you'd get some sort of victory points from it or an ability, uh, or they just would do nothing for you. Well, now what you can do is you can always, when you're going to play an occupation card, if it's not helpful for your strategy, you can just discard it when you would play it and gain the right most victory point token. So the first two that are gonna be played by us will gain us four victory points. And then any more that we play will give us three until that pile is exhausted and then down to two. These light brown ones are all of our starting occupations that we start with, start with in our hand. I randomly drew one at the beginning and we have raider. That's why I'm talking about pillaging because this will help us with our raiding and pillaging. This will gain us two victory points at the end of the game uh, and it will give us plus one to both our bl uh, blue die and orange die. And then you can even split the battle result to receive two goods, which is really cool. So yeah, that's why I feel like I'm going to be pillaging a lot in this game. So Right now, this is in my hand. Uh, I have to actually do an action to put it down on the table and get that be uh, that benefit. And what's crazy is I've got all these other ones here, and we're going to remove them from the game. We're not going to see any of these ones for this playthrough. Now, I don't think I mentioned this, but this game is a beat your own score, meaning that there is no AI here. The AI is that when you place workers on the board, you're going to leave them out for the next round and they're going to block those spots and you'll have to wait to get those workers back until the following round. So it makes you not be able to do the same actions every round. And it's kind of a cool way of making the solo work, but it really is a puzzle. And of course, there is no AI, so you're just trying to score as high as you can. What I'm trying to get to is 100. If I get to 100, I will be as happy as can be. <laughs> Now this is our starting board. Now you can play the short version or the long version. I'm gonna go ahead and play the long version of the game because that's considered the normal game. And what you need to do for the solo game is you grab two colored pawns. So I've got yellow Vikings and red Vikings. You're gonna place five in your thing space here and five over here of the opposite color. Now, whatever your opposite color is, you're gonna use one less Viking than the other color. So I've already removed one of the red ones from the game. You won't see it here. The remaining of those Vikings, I'm going to place one here in the slot one. You can see there's a one here. That's because in round one will gain him. And then rounds two through seven will gain whichever color is here. And it also helps you know which color uh, workers you'll pull back from the board and which color you're going to leave on the board. Really cool way of doing this. Now, if you look over here, this board has tons of minus ones. So right now, I think my score in the game is negative 43. I think there's 43 negative points. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have to get 143 three points to uh, counteract that. That is the plan. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing during the game is placing my goods out on this table, and those are going to be those polyominoes, and I'm going to try and fill this up and cover up these minus ones, as well as cover up these income levels, which will then gain me more income during the income phase, and potentially some bonuses. The game has a great legend as to what you need to start the game. We're going to start the game with one of every type of weapon, that beginner occupation which we already drew, and a mead. Now in the competitive game, you have to have all of your weapons face up so that other players can see it. Here in solo, who cares? I'm going to have all of this face up. <laughs> the biggest thing I need to remember is which one of my occupations are actually in my hand versus what I have played. And here's our mead. Our mead can be used to help feed our Vikings because yes, every round you're going to have to feed your Vikings. Otherwise, you're going to get that thing penalty. That thing penalty was this minus three victory points. You don't want that. We already have enough minuses, I think, on our base board. Let's not add to that, shall we? <laughs> And last but not least, before we jump into our playthrough, what would any Euro game be without stone, wood, and ore? Yeah, pretty much not a Euro game, right? <laughs> so here's our supply. We'll be gaining from here. Also, when we remove things from the mountain strips, we'll be placing them in here. With that, I think we are ready to start. So what's great is this game comes with this wonderful board that shows all 12 phases of a round of this game. We're going to play seven rounds. At the end of the seventh round, we're actually not going to do 10 through 12 here. We'll get all the way to step nine. Then the game will end. We'll count up our score and we'll cheer or we'll cry. We'll see which one it is. So first thing we'll do, we'll start here. It says a new Viking. 
This is simply stating we're going to pull the single Viking from round one and put it into our thing area. That means now we'll have six Vikings for the first round. It does also mean, though, that we're going to have to feed more Vikings, and you'll see how that works as we play. We'll now move to phase two. We'll go to harvest. You're once again going to look at your player board. You can see here this is our harvest track. In this round, we're going to harvest all level one goods. The level one goods will be peas here. Then we've got flax, which sounds definitely lovely, and some beans. After harvest, these are the current resources that we have. After the harvest phase, we'll move to turn exploration boards and play silver. This bottom track here tells us if we need to flip any of those exploration boards and if we need to put any coins on any other boards. We're only in round one. It's a dash, so nothing's going to happen there. Round four, let's go ahead and draw a weapon card. So we now have a second bow and arrow. And then finally, the meat and potatoes of the game, so to speak, is the action phase. This is where we're going to use our Vikings. We can either use them up until they're gone, or for some crazy reason, we can just uh, choose to end the round, but don't do that. Use all of your workers. Uh, and then after that, we'll move on to phase six. Before we start deciding where to go on the board, let me just explain a little bit about how the actions work in this game. Up at the top, we have different columns here. These columns all denote how many Vikings need to be used in order to activate that space. So if I'm activating the space on the far left, I only need one Viking. If I'm activating the space over here, second farthest to the right, I have to use four. Yeah, that's right. Four of our Vikings. We only have six right now. <laughs> and four out of six is pretty much all of them. The expansion provides a fifth slot, and this is really cool. When you go to this fifth slot, that has to be the last action you do for that turn. You can use either one or two Vikings. If you use one Viking, you'll use it, do the action, you're done. If you use two Vikings, you can also play one occupation card down on the table when you're doing this action. So it's a really nice way to help get, uh, get your occupation cards out of your hand, get those victory points or whatnot. It's also important to note that this column, column with three Vikings and the column with four Vikings also has a benefit. If I go to a three Viking spot, I get to draw a new occupation card. If I go to a four Viking spot, I get to play one occupation card. And remember with the expansion, I can just discard an occupation if I don't find it helpful and gain the four victory points for the first one. Second one, four victory points. And then from that moment on, it's three on. I've never gotten down to two. <laughs> So the first area that my Vikings are eyeing is this mountain and trade area. So these spots that have a one or a different number and an arrow up, that tells you how many different goods you can upgrade one level. For an example, if I had this good, I could then upgrade it to its red side, or I could go from red to green or green to blue. The green and blue goods you can actually put on your main board to uh, increase income, to block off minus ones. The red and orange ones are the ones that we can eat, and we can also use them in some of these different buildings as well, as well as our artisan building. Although it would be nice to upgrade some of my orange goods, I think what I'm going to start off with is just a simple one Viking action here to go ahead and grab two goods from a mountain track. With the two strips that I have here, there's tons of options. It's either wood or it's wood. <laughs> now, because I went to that spot, I can only choose one of these strips and I grab the next two items. If we were all the way at the end and there was only one item here and I really wanted those coins, I could grab just that one coin, but then I wouldn't be able to get anything else. So I'm definitely going to grab these two wood. It also opens up the stone and the ore behind it uh, for future turns. So I'll go ahead and put this in my supply. With that wood that our Vikings just climbed the mountain to grab, I'm going to go ahead and use one, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to build a shed. So I have to spend the one wood. I'll put that into the supply. But I think I'm going to go ahead and build the shed that we have that's unique to us, and that is this hermit's hut. Now, I think I showed you the ice house side. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to have to do that. I have to go whaling. No, I think I'm going to do the hermit's hut. So this is the one that I'm going to build. I'm going to put this right by my main board, and now I can place goods on this tile as well. It can help me gain income as well as potential bonuses. For our next action, let's go ahead and go hunting. This looks pretty nice. We'd get some meat and some pelt. So I'm going to go ahead and place a worker here. Now, this isn't guaranteed. What I have to do is I have to roll an orange die. The orange die is the D8 die. What I'm trying to roll is a zero. 
Now you might ask, Colin, how do you get a zero on a die? Well, you don't. What you can do is you can spend either wood or bow and arrows to decrease this die's roll by however much you spend. And I do get to roll this die three times, but anytime I roll it, I have to take the new result. So if I roll a three the first time and I roll an eight the next time, I have to take the eight. I can't use the three. If, let's say, after I roll three times, there's no possible way for me to get to zero, I can instead say I failed at hunting. If I fail at hunting, I get the benefits to this side, so I'll gain one wood, and I can grab from the deck or the discard pile one bow and arrow to put into my hand that I could use for a future action. So you'll always get something with these actions, even if you fail. Love that. Of course, we all know rolling dice is my thing, so... <laughs> And I say that I roll a one. That is absolutely glorious. I'll go ahead and spend a bow and arrow. One minus the bow and arrow, which is a minus one, makes that a zero. We definitely just caught some game. Uh, a euro game with dice rolling. I feel like they made it just for me. <laughs> so we'll grab both of these and put them in our supply. After taking down some game, I think the next thing we're going to do is do some crafting. We're going to upgrade our flax that we have and turn it into some linen. So this flax is orange, and so that means we can only use that to eat or maybe put it into our artisan shed. But now we've changed it into a green good. Green goods can be put onto our main board, and it's longer and it looks cooler. Our final action for this round, we're going to do the elk hunt. We're going to use, we could use just one worker, but we have two left. We're going to use both of them because then that way we can play the occupation that's in our hand. So now we've gained two victory points. And if we go pillaging or raiding, we get plus one to our dice. So it's the exact opposite of hunting. Hunting, we're trying to get zero. Pillaging and plundering, we want as high as possible. That's what I like. Normally I have an easier time rolling high than low. Couldn't believe I rolled a one. That was awesome. So what we can do here, we're rolling a, an orange die again. That's a D8. We're trying to get all the way to zero. We can use the traps, the spears, or the bow and arrows that we have in our hand. We still have three weapons in our hand, thank goodness. So I can roll a three, two, one to be able to complete this. If we do, we get to draw a weapon card and we'll gain some antlers. Come on, opposite die luck. Okay, that's a five. I want it as low as possible. Uh, that's a three. I could spend all three or do I take the chance? All three is expensive, but I think I'm gonna do it because I don't know and I don't wanna fail. So I'm gonna spend all three. That makes that three to a zero. That means we succeeded. We get to draw one weapon card. So we'll draw a sword. Oh yes, yeah, swords are great for pillaging. And we've gained some antlers. We've completed our action phase. We can move to the determining start player. Well, guess what? I'm the only one playing. So I think I'll stay as the start player. If you're playing competitively, the person that was last to play for that round will then be the first one to go the next round. Uh, then we'll go to income. Now, before we calculate what our income is, and you can do this at any time, this is just generally the time I recommend you do this, you can lay out goods onto your board and also lay goods out onto your Vikings to ensure that you have sufficient food. Before we calculate income, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up my hermit's hut. This is my artisan board. If I can fill it up to where everything that is below and underneath this one, so this whole area is completely filled, I can gain myself one coin during the income phase. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to use this elk, uh, the antlers here, and you can see we have some restrictions. So on this specific board, green goods and blue goods can be next to each other. They can place, be placed anywhere we want. Coins always can be placed anywhere we want. Red goods and orange goods can be used on this board, but they cannot be orthogonally adjacent. They can be uh, diagonally adjacent, that's fine. And we can't use any ore. Well, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of putting them like so, so that then we have completely completed this board. This board at the end of the game will gain us seven victory points. We're going to earn now one coin every round because of this. And we're going to get a bonus herb every round because we've covered this space. The spaces that have bonus symbols on them are considered covered. Now you can cover them up if you would like, but if you don't, like I did here, and you can see them and all eight spaces around them are covered either by the edge of the board or by goods, then during the bonus phase, which we'll get to shortly, we'll gain those goods. Now let's take a quick look at our baseboard. So 
We can place goods anywhere we want on this board. The only catch is that we cannot cover income slots unless everything underneath it from uh, the diagonal underneath it is totally filled up. And remember, these bonus spots are considered already filled, but we can always fill them with other items if it's easier to do that with our goods. So as an example, I can't place an or right here and say that I'm earning two income because I haven't filled out this slot or this spot or this spot. If all three of these spots are filled, I can earn two income. What I think I'm going to do for this round is I'm gonna place this green good I have here, this pelt, like so, because that way at least I'm gonna earn another one income. I'm covering up this one slot, so that's great. I'm not blocking the one here because I don't have enough resources to be able to get two. I'm already getting one from the hermit's hut. So during that income phase, I've earned two wonderful dollars. Now, I'm going to immediately use one of them, and I'll show you why. Right now, we have partially fed our Vikings. I need to make sure that this whole area is completely filled up, so I'm going to use the coin because, yes, they can eat coins. I'm assuming that you give them money, they can go out and buy McDonald's or something. Uh, that is what I'm doing there to use the coin to make sure this area is filled up so I don't get a minus three victory point uh, penalty when we get to feeding or feasting with our Vikings. Speaking of which, we're just about to get there. We're going to move to animal breeding. If I had two or more of the same type of animals, any type, they'd start breeding. I am hopeful that I'll get some animals going and you guys can see that, but no guarantees. Next then, phase nine is feasting. Those Vikings sure look hungry. They'll go ahead and eat all of this, including the coin. We'll remove that, but that means no penalty. Great. Phase 10 will be our bonus time. We only have one bonus, but it's a good bonus. We've got our herbs here. We have fully covered that eight spaces around it. So that means we'll gain an herbs good and we're gonna gain that each round. Then what we'll do is we'll move to update and add a new mountain strip. We'll remove the leftmost resource from each of these mountain strips, and then we'll move that good old pencil. This looks like a superhero pencil. <laughs> That's really thematic. One space back. And now we have these three mountain strips available to us. Finally, we'll move to step 12. We'll remove placed Vikings that are on the action board, except for in the solo game, you start that in round two. So we're done. Let's start round two now. With that round two, we'll grab two new Vikings instead of one, and we'll grab our other red, red Vikings. We'll have a total of seven this round. We've got our five Vikings hanging out over here. We'll bring them up over here, plus the two here. Next, what we'll do, we'll move to the harvest step. That's phase two. And if we look at our board, our harvesting is now level one and level two goods. This means we'll harvest peas, flax, beans, and grain. Our next phase will be turning exploration boards. But if you look here, once again, we will not do that. We'll start that in round three. From here, we'll move to phase four. That will be to draw a weapon and we get a trap. And then now we move to the meat and potatoes. Let's do our actions with our seven workers. To start us off for this round, we're going to head into the mountains and we're going to grab some weapons. So this costs us two workers. We're going to be able to draw two weapon cards. Our first one is a sword. Great for pillaging. We got to get a boat so we can pillage. And our other one is a bow and arrow. We then can grab three goods from any one of these mountain strips. Yeah, one, two, and two coins. Definitely doing this mountain strip. That's not it though. We're not done with the mountains. We're gonna go and spend one more worker to go ahead and grab one more good from the mountains. And we're gonna be magical Vikings. And you're gonna see what I mean in a second. That one more additional good, it's too good to pass up two more coins. Let's grab this one. I'll go ahead and remove this strip. We have cleaned out those mountains. I call us the magical Vikings because we're gonna convert this herb into a pig. <laughs> Tell me how they did that? I have no idea, but that's how cool we are. I think it's time for our Vikings to head to the livestock market. We now have some money, so I'm going to spend two of our workers to come here. We have to spend three coins. So I've got my three coins that I just earned by going to the mountains. And then I'm going to be able to grab one grain, nice long orange tile, as well as one of any animal. And you can imagine, although they are the cheapest, they're only worth one victory point. If I have two pigs, they are going to breed every round. The pigs, unlike all the other animal types that need to become pregnant, and then after becoming pregnant will breed, so essentially they breed every other round, pigs will breed every round. We only have two workers left. I think I'm going to send one here to try and catch some fish. We do have, oh no, actually, all we have is one trap. So I have to roll a one 
Oh boy. Well, if I fail at this, which is likely, I can at least get one spear and one trap. Let's see some bad dice rolling. Oh no, that's an eight. That's the wrong way. We're not pillaging yet. We don't have a boat. Oh, that's a one. That'll work. I have one trap right here. <laughs> one minus that trap of one is zero. That'll give me two fish and one barrel of oil. Nice. With one worker left, we're once again going to go to the far right side of the board, do this, spend one ore. We can grab one tool from the gray board that costs less than nine total swords. Of the ones that I see here, this scimitar, I think that's what it is. I'm definitely going to grab this one. Well, that was a quick round. Let's go ahead and move to phase six, which we can just skip because we're definitely first player. Let's now get some income. Let's put some of this stuff on our board first, shall we? That scimitar weapon is great at surrounding a bonus. So we can do this for that. We could put this one right here and drop a coin right here. That way we'll gain a mead during the bonus time. We're still only gaining two gold. Now, if I could fill out one, two, three more slots, then we could gain three gold during the income phase from this board. But I don't have, the only thing I have is one more gold and one more ore. And I feel like both of those are too valuable. So I think during the income phase, we're just going to earn three gold. One from our hermit's hut and then two from here. We can then move to animal breeding. We have two pigs. As long as you have two or more, either they'll become pregnant or if they're pigs, they just make another one. So we now have three glorious pigs. Then we'll go ahead and move to feasting. Between the grain and our fish, we're set to go. Now, something that I haven't had happen yet, but I just want to explain. If ever you want to use the same resource twice, so let's say I wanted to use both fish and I put a coin in the middle here. If ever I feed my Vikings the same type of food twice in one feast, they don't like it. So what I have to do with that second one or with one of them, I actually have to put them vertically straight up and down. So that's why it's good to have variety of types that you give them. They're kind of a bicky, uh, a picky, a bicky. <laughs> they're kind of a picky sort, apparently. There we go. And it adds to the puzzle. I like it. So here we go. We have fed them. I'll remove these. We've completed the feast. After we've all eaten our fill, we can move to the bonuses. We saw that we just covered up or surrounded, I should say, the mead. And we have the herbs from our hermit's hut. So we've gained both of those as our bonuses. We'll now move to updating the mountain strips. We'll remove one resource from the farthest left side of both of the available ones, and we'll move one down again. So now we have all three of these available. Finally, we will now remove all of the yellow Vikings and put them back into our thing place. To start our third round, we have our six workers here. We now gain our new Vikings. There are two here now, so we have a total of eight. Each round, you're going to gain one additional Viking. That also means each round you're going to be <laughs> needing to feed a little bit more Vikings. Now we move to the harvest phase, phase two, and we get no harvest this time. Fortunately, I have a lot of food. I'm actually pretty set there. Now, though, we're going to move to the exploration board. And you can see here we're going to flip exploration board A. All the other boards that we don't flip, we're going to put two silver on them to sweeten the pot. Make us look, oh, they look so good. We want to get one. The A island is the Isle of Man. Let's flip that. And now the three other islands will each have two silver on them. That means if we do explore them, we'll gain those two silver on top of it. We'll move to that phase four, draw another weapons card. We've got another sword. I really need to pillage. I need a boat so bad. <laughs> and now phase five, we'll move to actions. Since we have three pigs at home, I think it's safe to say our Vikings want to get out to the mountains. We're going to go here for one Viking. We're going to grab two things from a mountain strip. I have the choice between two wood, two wood, or two wood. Hmm. I think I'm going to go two wood. In order for us to start pillaging and plundering, we need a longship. We need a way to be able to get out there, get to those different islands, and take down what's rightfully ours. Come on, we're Vikings. So I am going to spend three Vikings to come over here. The red sailed ships are long ships. So I'm going to spend three workers. I do get to draw one new occupation. You can see that here because I'm doing a three action spot. And I have a wanderer here. Anytime we're at no harvest, we can gain two resources from any of the mountain strips. Well, that's kind of sweet. I might want to try and play that. We're going to pay the two wood that was depicted there, and we're going to gain one of these longships. Now, you can always pay just in gold for, long, for any of the boats. This one would cost eight gold, so we can just pay eight gold if ever we want another one. 
You place your longships or nars right up here and your whaling boats over here. We finally have a longboat. We've got three swords in hand. We don't have any stone, but I still think it's worth it. We're going to spend two workers and we're going to go pillaging. Now you have to have a long, uh, long ship in order to do this. We are now going to roll a blue die. That's the D12. And we're trying to roll as high as possible. Yeah, that 12. We can also spend swords or stone to increase that number. Whatever number it is, and just like with hunting, we can roll the die up to three times. We can then compare it to any of the blue or gray uh, tiles, and we can gain one equal to the value that we have. Now, don't forget our special ability. The whole reason I went this route is because we are the Raider Vikings. So we automatically get a plus one to our die roll, and we can actually split this roll into two numbers if we would like. Now, you can fail at this roll if you roll a five or a less, and we got a 10. Okay, I think, ah, man, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to spend two. Oh, no, you know what? I have a plus one. So that's an 11. I'm going to spend one sword to get 12. Heck yeah. I'm going to spend two swords to get 13. I want to gain this good. This good looks awesome. So I just gained this huge anvil for 13. And you can tell that it's a 13 because there's a number here. That's the cost. And that's what we just gained. That was pillaging. Let's go ahead and raid now. To do raiding, we need to have, once again, a longboat, which we do. We can use, uh, we're only going to roll the D8 this time. We can use swords and stones to increase our die roll. We're looking for as high as we can. That's a six. Hmm. That's actually pretty good. I could get a seven value. Or do I reroll it? Let's reroll it. Come on. Uh, I'm lucky. No, that's a six. Okay, I think that's telling me to leave it as a six. I'll use the sword. Oh, wait. I actually already have a seven. Gosh, I'm never going to remember that I have this raider. I already have it as a seven. I'll go ahead and use this sword to make it an eight. We'll go ahead and grab this helmet. This helmet has a sword value of eight. We have one more worker left. We're going to go to the farthest right side of the board. We're going to get ourselves a whaling ship. So we're going to go here. We're going to spend one silver and one of the wood that we have. That's our only wood. We're going to gain a level, uh, level three, a three victory point worth whaling ship. And we can grab any of the exploration boards that we can obtain with one worker and a boat that we have. The Isle of Sky here is only worth 10 victory points, and we're actually adding 25 negative victory points. Ugh. But we can easily cover up some of these spots, like gaining some fish, gaining some runes, and uh, hopefully gaining some more money. We can gain four gold uh, if we can get up on this income. Oh yeah, and we can even get some barrels of oil. So I think, I don't know, we're going to try this one. That also means we gain the two silver. This will complete our action phase. We'll move right to income. Let's fill out our boards a little. Well, whether it be right or wrong, this is what I did with all of my money and my two goods that I just got. I still have this ore, but looking here now, I'm going to gain three gold from the Isle of Sky and one gold from the Hermit's Hut. So that's a total of four. And I'm still only at two here. So that's a total of six. So six gold for our income. We'll move through the rest of these phases pretty quickly. We've got animal breeding. I have three pigs. That means we'll gain a fourth. No, it doesn't mean we'll gain two pigs. As long as you have two or more pigs, you'll only gain one more pig each round. Let's go ahead and have some food. Here we have our feasting board, some fish, some peas, some flax, looking yummy. We'll move to that bonus round here and we will gain one herbs, we'll gain one ruin thanks to the Isle of Sky, and we'll gain one mead. Then we'll go ahead and update our new mountain strips and we'll gain our workers back from the board. These ones will be our red ones. We'll remove one resource each. Perfect. Move our superhero pencil one back and now we'll also grab all of our red workers back and we're ready to start the next round. Starting that next round means grabbing these red workers here. We're already in round four. After this round, we're halfway through already. Okay, and then we'll move to harvest. We now get level one through level three goods. That means we now have cabbage as well. So many orange goods. Then we'll move to flipping board B, but board B was Isle of Sky, so we're not going to flip any of the exploration boards. We're just going to put two coins on all of the other ones, making them even more enticing. After doing that, we get to draw a weapon card and we have a spear. Hmm, okay. And then we'll move to our next action phase. We can't pillage and raid, so what are we going to do? Well, we could plunder you guys over here, but we would need two longboats. Hmm, it's kind of expensive. We'll have to see if we want to do that. 
The first action we're going to do this round is spend two workers here to go to the mountains to grab three resources and to draw two weapon cards. Our first one is a spear, and our second one is also a spear. Cool. We're going to go ahead and grab one wood and two stone. As a free action at any time, we can spend money to gain a ship. I'm going to spend a total of five money to gain one of these NAR ships. I'm going to place that NAR ship right here, and then I do have one ore. I'm going to place this ore here on my whaling ship because I think I might go whaling. When you go whaling, you get to reduce your die roll equal to the amount of ore that's on all of the whaling ships that you're bringing with. So I would get to reduce my die roll by two. And it's one where we're trying to get as close, well, not as close. We're trying to get to zero, but we're rolling a D12. So it's a little bit harder. Let's go ahead and try this whaling. Now, look at what we get as a benefit. That is really good if we can get to zero, but we're rolling a D12. Now, we can use wood and we can use spears to reduce our number. We already have two ore on our one whaling ship, so we only need to roll a two, a one, or a zero for that. Plus, I have three spears, so that should help us. Now, if we do fail at doing this, we do get two of our workers back, so at least we have that. So I'm really just risking one worker here. Let's roll our die up, and we get a 12. That's definitely terrible. Why don't we get that when we're pillaging? We'll re-roll. That's a 3. 3 minus the 2 ore is a 1. I'll go ahead and spend this to make it a 0, and we just successfully whaled. Look at all of these glorious resources. That is amazing. I almost forgot, since we had to use 3 workers for that action, we get to draw a card. And we have a weapon supplier. This is totally my type of card. It's yellow background, which means that when we play it, we'll get two victory points. And then one time we get to draw four weapons cards. Our Vikings haven't done much crafting. So I want to show you this. We'll spend one wood here and two workers to get this small little chest and one coin. But it's blue, which means we can place it anywhere on our board. And I like the money. So I'll take that. We're then going to end this round by doing the theft action. This is the whole reason I wanted that NAR. You think I wanted to actually trade nicely? No way. What we want to do here is use two so that we can play. I want to play this one too because we're not going to have a harvest this time. And so when we have that no harvest, we get to grab two resources for one of the mountain strips. That is awesome. And it's a victory point, so I'll take it. Uh, but now what we get to do is we'll roll this D8, trying to get as high as possible. Can use any of these weapons. I have still two of the spears, and I have one bow and arrow. And whatever we get, we can also grab any of the blue or the gray tiles. This is a theft action, so because of that, we don't get our raider plus one. We get a six, hmm... I think I'm going to take a chance and use all three of my weapons with that roll of nine. I think I'm going to grab this horseshoe looking thing and place that out on our board. Okay, that's going to end the action phase. Let's go ahead and move to income. Well, I'm slowly but surely filling out the base board. I'm literally two away from gaining five coins from here, but I don't have enough. Uh, but at least I will gain the wood here and I'll gain the stone and the mead, which is nice. So I'm gaining four from here, one still from my artisan, and then I didn't change anything on the Isle of Sky, which is three, so that's a total of eight coins. After our income phase, we'll go to animal breeding. You better believe we've got pigs upon pigs upon pigs. I've got to do something with these pigs. I have a plan for the next round. Now let's do some feasting. Here we can see our Vikings are eating in style, even got some mead to wash down all that flax and grain. Uh, we're good for this round. Let's pull these off. Next, we're going to do our bonuses. Now you're going to see I have placed some of the income that we've earned, actually almost all of it, around this rune because I really wanted that rune. So I've now blocked this rune off. We're also not going to gain five coins going forward. And you can do that in between the income phase and the bonus phase. So going to the bonus phase, this is what we'll be gaining. We're gaining a wood, a stone, some herbs, some mead, and two runes. Let's update our mountain strips. Look at this half rock that I got. <laughs> I guess a uh, rock or stone is just a stone. Who cares? We'll move this over. And now we will grab our Vikings and start the next round. We'll start by grabbing our two new Vikings. Then we go to harvest. We don't have any harvest this round, but remember, we're a wanderer. Because we're not harvesting, we're going to wander out to the mountains and grab two resources there. How does an ore and two silver sound? Hmm, I like it. 
We'll then flip board C for the exploration. We'll put coins on the other ones. We now have cork. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. And then we will draw one weapon. Our weapon is a sword. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to move back to the action phase. As the pigs continue to foster in our Vikings community, we're definitely going to go to the mountains as often as we can. <laughs> we're going to go here. We're going to grab two materials. From the ones remaining, I think I'm going to grab these two wood. I think this is the first time I'm doing a four Viking action. We're going to do this one. We're going to do the top here. So we have to pay two stone and two wood. So that's why I needed to go there to get some additional wood. So we've got the two stone and two wood taken care of. We're going to grab the top items here because we can choose either the top or the bottom. So we're going to grab a long house because I should be able to start filling that up with some of those excess pigs. And we're going to get another Nar ship. Now, I really wish it was a long ship, but say la vie. It is this one, which is fine. Uh, it still has five victory points, but I really want long ships because I like pillaging. But we'll deal with it. I should also place my four Vikings on the board as well. Now, by activating a spot that takes four Vikings, I do get to play an occupation for my hand. So I'm going to play this weapon supplier. That's going to gain me two victory points at the end of the game. And I'm going to get to draw four weapons. So our first one is a bow and arrow. Our second one is a sword. I like that. Our third one is another bow and arrow. And our fourth one is a trap. Should we do some pillaging? Don't mind if I do. We're going to use two Vikings to do this. Let's see what we get. We'll roll our d12. We'll roll our d12 and we get a one. Well, I think it's easy to say we're going to pass on that one. Let's roll it again. A three. Holy chickens. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, there's a 12. A one, three, and a 12. I will definitely take that. Remember, we have plus one because of our raider. So that's a 13. And then I think I'm going to spend 14, 15, and I can st spend stone to make that 16. We just gained the crown of Queen Elizabeth. Just what I was hoping for. Then let's go ahead and move to our raiding. Now we can still use swords and stone uh, to increase this, but if we had any ore on our longships, we couldn't use it. I don't have any ore on them anyways. We do get a plus one. Let's see what we get. We'll give our die a roll. We rolled a one. No, we don't want a one. Uh, we want a seven. That'll work because I was actually eyeing this one, which is an eight. That's a plus one because we are doing our, because we're a raider. And so we're good there. Let's then try our hand at hunting. We do have a couple bow and arrows in our hand, so let's see what we can do. Looking for a zero, looking for a zero. A three. Oh, I've got two bow and arrows. That's still not enough. Let's try it again. That's a one. Beautiful. One will work. I'll spend one of these. We successfully hunted. Because we successfully hunted, we've got some meat and we have a pelt. Perfect. This seems to be the round of hunting and pillaging, so let's just keep it going. Let's elk hunt. I do have two weapons still in my hand, so if I roll a two or a one after three rolls, I can succeed on this one. Never in my life have I wanted so many low die rolls. That's a two! Oh my gosh. I will take that. I'll discard both of these to make that a zero, and we just successfully elk hunted. That means we'll gain a new weapon card. So let me draw a new one. We have a trap. And we get some antlers, which is great because it's green, and we can place that out on our board, hopefully. With finishing the action phase, we'll move right to income. Let me show you my boards. I'm not doing the greatest on my main board. I usually like to be up to m maybe 12, but this still does look pretty good. We're getting all of our bonuses now. We are going to gain 7 gold from this board. We'll gain 4 gold from this one, so that gives us 11, and then we have our hermit's hut here for one so that's a total of 12 gold we first we get our first set of 10 here plus two and you don't i just take them this way but i can always break them out as you can see i've put out singletons in places where i need then we have our animal breeding we still even after using some in the longhouse have three pigs so i'm going to generate another one so here's our fourth one which is perfect then we'll go to feasting our hungry vikings fortunately have been fed then let's do our final three phases. We'll do our bonus, followed by updating mountain strips, and then grabbing our Vikings. From our hut, we'll get some herbs, just like we have since the first round. That will put us back up to two herbs. The reason we're only at two herbs is because I did use two herbs here, and I do want to mention that the pigs that are placed on to this longhouse, I am no longer going to gain the victory points that are on them, but they're helping me gain a total of two more bonuses, and you can see this longhouse is worth 17 points. It has 15 minus ones, but I've blocked everything but two of them, so that's pretty good. So I'll get some oil because of this, and uh, what is this? Uh, some beans, I think. Perfect. 
From Isle of Sky here, we'll gain some wool, we'll gain a rune, and because I now completed this area over here, we'll also gain a piece of wood. We have also surrounded all the bonuses that you can have on your baseboard. So we're going to gain one ore, we're going to gain one wood, we're going to gain one mead, we're going to gain a stone, and we're going to gain one rune. Ha ha ha. That was a lot that we just gained. The part of this game I haven't quite mastered yet is I can gain some good resources, but then what the heck do I do with them? <laughs> uh, we're going to refresh these mountain strips. We're going to remove one resource each, and then we'll move our superhero pencil one back. Let's start that penultimate round, round six, by grabbing our two uh, Vikings that we have here, putting them there. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, actually eleven. <laughs> the final round will have all twelve of our Vikings. Then what we do is we have our harvest, and we will gain goods one through four. The one new good that we have is the fruit. We have all the other ones, such as the peas, we've got the flax, we've got the beans, uh, we've got the grain, and we've got our cabbage. We'll then go and flip our exploration board, and I do want to draw my weapon right now. We have a spear, and let's go ahead and flip our boards, and then we'll start our action phase. Ice lay here. We'll go ahead and flip. We'll put coins on the other ones. We now have water forward worth 31 victory points, but 40 minus ones. And look at this. If you surround some of these areas like this one, you'd actually gain a longhouse. Oh man, that's somewhat appealing actually. You could also gain a ship. Yeah, I kind of like this one, but 40, 40 minus ones. Ouch. And you have to get this one by using three workers. You have to have a long ship, which I do have. Ugh. I don't know. I don't think there's a chance. Our Vikings always seem to start off with trying to avoid the pigs. That means we're going to the mountains yet again. We're going to gain one resource. We're also going to upgrade one of our items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whale meat and I'm going to upgrade it from red to green. So we turn that into something that's really cool, like a cloak. I like it. Now the two silver here is really tempting, but I think I'm going to go with the stone because I have a plan. We're going to spend two stone, the one stone that we got and the stone that we gained from our bonus actions, and three workers to get another longhouse. I can make these 17 victory points pretty easily with those pigs, so grabbing another one of those seems to make sense, plus I get to draw another occupation card, and this one is a plower. Yeah, we don't have any cows. There's no cows in this Vikings territory. But since we're sitting here, I'm also going to go whaling. And I can do that because I've got three wood, plus I have a spear, and I have ore on my whaling boat. So I'm going to spend three, and that means I also get to draw another one of these. This one is a forest blacksmith. Exchange ore on a crafting action space, and you can gain one item from a mountain space. It's actually kind of nice, and it's worth three victory points. But eh, probably at this point, I'm not going to do it. I'm trying to roll a zero on my D12, but I've got lots of ways to mitigate it. Remember that our whaling boat has two ore on it, so already we're at a minus two. Let's see what we get. We get a 12. That definitely will not work. Uh, let's roll it up again. A four. Four minus the two from the ore is a two. I will then take one spear. That's a one and one wood. That makes it a zero. That means we succeeded. We got some pretty nice resources for that whaling action. Now I think I'm going to make use of one of our extra NAR ships, and I'm going to go and emigrate. I'm going to spend two workers here, and I have to spend coins equal to whatever round it is. It's round six, so I'm going to have to spend six silver. It kind of hurts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over my NAR ship, and I'm going to put it actually onto my feeding track. In essence, what we're doing is we're having some of our Vikings go and find a new land to live in. So we're going to flip this over. This is now going to be worth 18 victory points for us, and we're going to put it up here. That means those Vikings are no longer here. So when we have to feed our Vikings, it's going to be a little bit easier. And we just gained 18 victory points instead of only five, but we did have to pay six bucks for it. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be a little diplomatic. We still have one NAR ship, so we can go here. It only costs one worker. It's going to cost us two coins to do this, so I'm giving up more money, which I could place on my board. I'm not sure if this is worth it, but it is what it is. Uh, what we can do is take all of our green resources that we have yet to put on our boards. We can't change the ones that are already on our boards. But all the ones that have not that are not currently on our boards, we can upgrade them by one. Basically, we traded them, and now they're better. That means all of these resources will turn into these resources. And what's nice about that is, remember, blue ones I can put next to each other, so it's going to be a lot easier to place them on my boards. 
My final action for this round, and I'm still not sure if this is worth it either, something new you can do in this expansion, you can actually emigrate with your whaling boats. Since there's only one whaling action space on the one to two player board, and I'm not going to take my workers off of that spot after this turn, I can't do any more whaling. So I might as well make that boat worth more than three victory points. It'll be worth seven. Now I do have that one ore on here. I'm just going to have to remove that. I don't gain anything for that. But I'm going to take that ship off. I'm going to put this seven onto my feasting track. It does mean that once again, I need less food because those Vikings just went off to a new land. We've finished our action phase. Let's go ahead and move to income. I'm going to place some of these goods that I have onto our boards. Let's see if I can eke out a few more bucks. We'll start by looking at the Isle of Sky. We have a total of four silver here. I'm finally starting to fill out this board. We've got nine here for this one, so that's 13, and then one with the Hermit Hut, so that's a total of 14 coins. So 14 silver, I will take that. Next, we'll move to animal breeding. I still have two pigs, so that means we'll gain a third pig. Then we'll go to feasting. Some of our Vikings left us. They went to find a new land. What The remainders had cabbage and had some mead and some flax. Now it's bonus time. Let's see all the different items we gain as a bonus. We've got two of these long sheds and I've set them up exactly the same as one another. So that means we'll gain two oil and two beans. We'll then grab one of these herbs. We'll grab a wool. We'll grab a rune. We'll grab a wood uh, because of over there. And I did fill this up so we can grab a flax. Finally, just like last round, we'll grab the ore, the wood, the stone, the mead, and we have our rune. Now that we have all these different items, it's going to be a trick to make them useful. That's our plan, at least. We're going to update our mountain strips and then grab our yellow Vikings back for our final round. Let's update those mountain strips. This one is totally done. This one's going to lose the ore. We've got wood and wood. And I'm just going to remove the pencil from the game because now any of these are available to us. We'll start that last round by grabbing our final two Vikings. We have a total of 12 now that we can use. No harvest, but that does mean we get to grab two resources. Thanks to our Wanderer ability, we can grab two resources from the mountain strips whenever there's no harvest. We'll grab a wood and a stone. This final round, there's no exploration board change, and we draw one weapon card. Oh, we have a sword. That's pretty nice. And now our final action phase. Let's do it. Are you guys ready for this? Not sure if I am, but we're going to do it. I'm going to spend two stone and two wood and spend four workers right off the bat. Oh my goodness. Uh, but this means we're going to get another long shed. Yeah, we're just going to fill up with long sheds. I've got so much food. Why the heck not? So I've got a long shed and I'm going to gain another boat. And hey, that's at least five victory points. It has to be a NAR boat. So I'll go ahead and grab that. Also, because I did a four worker action, I can play one of these cards. Well, I'm going to just play it to the discard pile. I don't care what it is because I'm just going to gain the four victory point token. Now we can pillage and raid one more time. Let's do it one more time and see what we get. All right, we're going to place two workers here. I have one sword in my hand. I already have a plus one with my die roll. Let's see what we roll. I'm eyeing a 12 piece if we can get there. That's a 12. Uh, do I want to spend one more for 13? Actually, we already have 13. So it's the question of do I want to spend one to get 14? I think I'm just going to grab this chalice. I am forgoing one point. I did roll a 13, but I uh, just the 13 that's out there, it doesn't fit anywhere. This is the 13 that I could grab, uh, but it doesn't fit on my board. So we're just going to go with the 12. I would say that was a successful pillage. Let's now see about a successful raid. Let's roll our die up. We've got a five plus one is a six. Ugh, no, let's try it again. We've got a four. No, I don't want that one. And we've got an eight. <laughs> okay, an eight will work. With our roll of an eight, a sword for a nine plus our one for rating, that's a 10. Let's grab this awesome looking hammer. We're then gonna do some crafting. We're gonna craft and change this flax over to a linen. This will hopefully help us with some of our long spaces that we need to complete. And then I'm going to spend three out of our remaining four workers. That also means we get to draw another occupation card. I'm not going to be able to do anything of this. A stone carver. Uh, and we're going to spend one ore to be able to grab any one of the tools from the board. Let's go ahead and grab this axe. And for my final action, I think I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab a regular shed, spending one wood. This is going to give me 
two points, eight minus the six empty spaces. I do have two more wood that I'm going to slot on there, so at least it'll give me four points at the end of the game. And with that, that's going to end the game, and I'm actually feeling pretty good. We're going to skip over this. We're going to do income. I've just spent the last 20 minutes putting things all onto our boards. Let me show you how they look. This actually looks pretty gosh darn nice. We were able to get all the way to the 18. We filled up, removed all of the minus ones. Thank goodness for all these big things that we got. What, we got the anvil, the axe, and the chalice this round? <laughs> if we hadn't gotten those. Oh, and this really helped too. Uh, these are our only resources that we haven't used. Let me show you the other things. So this is going to show us for in income of 18 plus the four here, so that's 22, plus the one here, that's 23. Now, instead of gaining it as income, we'll just put it on our final score sheet. We'll then move to animal breeding, and I did keep two pigs specifically so I could get one more. Thank you very much. We have three pigs. And then, of course, the final step is feeding our Vikings. This time, I did have to feed them to mead, so you can see that second one is vertical, but I still have enough here. They might just be a little bit drunk, but that's okay. <laughs> With how we did over here, I don't blame them. So now let's go ahead and calculate our score. So we're going to start off with ships. We have a total of 18 points for ships. Then for immigration, we have 18 plus 7, that's 25 points. Next, we have our exploration board, which is only 1, and that's only 10 points. The nice thing is, look, I was able to cover all the minuses. Then we'll do our sheds and houses, and right now we're adding only the positive values. So I've got an 8 and a 7, so that's 15. And then we have three long sheds. Each one is 17 points. So 17 times three is 51 points. So 51 plus the 15, that was 66 points. I like it. After all of that pig breeding, we only have three remaining. Each one's only worth one victory point. So that's just three victory points. For our occupations, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine victory points there. We have no silver. I used every single silver on our boards to block minus ones and whatnot. And then finally, we certainly do have the English crown. So that's two victory points. So let's add all this up. That gives us a base starting score of 156. That's actually pretty good for me. That, uh, I've gone over 100, but barely. Now we're going to do our negatives. Well, our home board has zero negatives. The exploration board we have is zero. The sheds and uh, other bonuses, we do have a couple of negatives. We have four negatives here, so that's four. Plus, we have one on this one, that's five. And we have uh, three on this one, so that's eight. Oh, and I almost missed. I have one here, so that is a nine. We've placed our nine here. We have a total of negative nine. And here we have zero thing penalties. So 156 minus nine. That'll give us a score of 147. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. <laughs> uh, a lot of that has to do with all that pillaging, that plus one to our die rolls. And I rolled pretty well this game, so that certainly helped. Well, I hope this showed you just how much fun this game can be, even solo. I do think it does shine in competitive a little bit more, but the nice thing about solo is you can try different strategies. Uh, I have done the pillaging and raiding before. I've never gotten that good of a score, uh, but I, I really doubled down on it this time, and it worked pretty dang well. And grabbing those sheds, I mean, three of those sheds really helped. So uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Please let me know if I made any errors. Put them in the comments below, and I will catch you at the next stop.